Hey guys, today I wanted to share with you guys this super delicious cooking and baking video. I'm going to be cooking some savory Tuscan chicken as well as a pumpkin spice roll for dessert. Both of these recipes turned out amazing and it was just such a perfect fall Friday night. I'm just in my cozy pajamas, my sweater, and sweatpants and had the windows open letting the cool air freshen up the house and my whole kitchen smelled amazing with all of this cooking. So for dinner, I'm just going to be preparing the Tuscan chicken recipe. This is absolutely amazing. I've already made this before. I actually made a short video out of this recipe and everybody loved it, so I decided to make it again. This recipe is super easy to make and only takes about 30 minutes, so I'm just starting off by seasoning the chicken breasts. I'm just using some salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning, and then I'm also coating them with some all-purpose flour. I'm then going to be heating up a pan to medium-high heat. Eat. And while I do so, I'm going to chop up one of these yellow onions. Then I'm just going to add some olive oil and butter to the heated pan. And then I'm going to add on the chicken breasts. If I were to redo this recipe, I probably would have chopped the chicken breast up before I cooked it. But I ended up doing this later and it turned out fine. So I'm going to cook the chicken breasts for three to four minutes on each side. And then I'm going to be flipping in between. And once those are nice and golden brown, I'm going to transfer them to a cutting board to cool off a little bit. I'm going to add about 1 4th cup of chicken broth to the pan to mix in with all of the chicken flavors. And then I'm going to add in the yellow onion that I diced up as well as some chopped up garlic. This is one of those recipes that you can really change up and experiment to your liking. So some of the things that you might want to add to this could be maybe some bell peppers, mushrooms, other types of vegetables. You could even add some different types of spices to make it more hot. So it's really up to you guys what you want to do to kind of make your own creation and play with the savory flavors of this Italian meal. So once I had the garlic and onion cooked for a little bit, I added in about one and a half cups of heavy cream as well as about one cup of grated parmesan cheese. I let all of these ingredients simmer and melt together for a few minutes and then I added back the chicken breast so that they can fully cook. I'm also going to be adding some spinach and some sun-dried tomato just as much as I wanted for the flavor that I was going for. I ended up chopping up the chicken breasts into bite-sized pieces and I just let this finish cooking. My whole kitchen was smelling amazing at this point and we were just so excited to dive into this recipe. This dinner would be perfect for an at-home date night because it's super easy to make but it's also super delicious. To go along with the chicken and creamy sauce, I'm going to be making some of this fall-shaped pasta. This is just some pasta that is infused with vegetables and it has the shapes of pumpkins and fall leaves which I thought was super cute for this October season. I got this fall-shaped pasta from from Aldi a couple weeks ago, so this would make for a perfect dinner night addition or just as a gift for somebody. This is how the chicken turned out when it was completely chopped up and it was done cooking, so I highly recommend you guys try this recipe out. I will leave the recipe link in the description. If you guys do try out this recipe, be sure to let me know how it came out. To complete the recipe, I just added some dried basil seasoning, although fresh basil would probably be even better. I gave it one final stir, and then I just served this over top of some of the fall leaf pasta. I also decorated my dining room table with some fall leaf autumn themed placemats, which were perfect for this recipe. And we just enjoyed this on this fall Friday night. So let me know if you guys liked this recipe, and next I'm going to be making a delicious pumpkin spice roll for dessert. We actually went on an evening walk after we ate this just to kind of digest a little bit and then we had a movie playing while I was baking the pumpkin spice roll. This was such a memorable night. I've really been enjoying these fall activities. Let me know what you guys have been up to this fall as well and I can't wait to continue to share more fall memories like this. So moving on to the pumpkin spice recipe. This was pretty easy to make. I had actually made a vanilla cake roll 
travel that was similar to this for Christmas last year, which turned out amazing. But for the fall, I wanted to do a pumpkin spice roll instead. So I'm going to be mixing together the dry ingredients, which are some almond flour, some all-purpose flour, some baking powder and baking soda, as well as some pumpkin spice seasoning and cinnamon. So I just whisked those together and then I'm going to be beating three eggs along with one cup of zero sugar sugar substitute. I like to use the Walmart brand zero calorie sweetener and this is just an alternative for if you are trying to cut down on your carb intake and you don't want to have a lot of sugar intake all at once. So I just add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients and mix that together and then I'm going to be spreading out the batter onto this baking tray that is lined with parchment paper. I actually had to double the recipe so that it would fit the pan. I'm going to be evenly spreading out the batter onto the parchment paper using a silicone spatula. I tried to get it as best I could to be even because it didn't even out on its own in the oven so I wanted to make sure it was completely flat because this will make for a better roll later. If I could do this recipe over again I probably would have used a larger sheet of parchment paper. I think I cut it exactly to fit the bottom of the pan but I should have left a little bit on the sides just so it was easier to grasp and I think this would have prevented some cracks that happened later on. So I'm just going to be baking this pumpkin spice cake at 375 for about 15 minutes and once it is out of the oven I'm going to be transferring it onto a towel. I'm then going to be rolling up the sheet of cake into a roll and I'm going to have it cool on the table for about an hour and I ended up putting it in the refrigerator for about 15 to 20 minutes just to speed up the cooling process. I feel like I rushed this a little bit because when I unraveled the cake from it being cooled, it wasn't completely done yet. It was still a little bit warm and this caused it to crack a little bit. But it wasn't that big of a deal. I ended up just spreading over top of it the cream cheese filling, of which I added some of the leftover heavy whipping cream from my previous dinner recipe, just to make it a little bit more fluffy and decadent. And it ended up covering all of the cracks and the roll turned out great regardless. For this pumpkin spice roll filling, I'm just using some cream cheese, heavy whipping cream, some pumpkin spice, vanilla extract, and some liquid sweetener. And I'm mixing that all up with an electric mixer just to make it nice and fluffy and then I'm going to be spreading that over the pumpkin spice cake that I made. At this point, I should have added some chopped up pecans to the inside of the pumpkin roll, but I forgot the step, so I just ended up adding the chopped pecans on top of the slices. So I'm just going to be rolling up the roll carefully, not to break anything further. And once this is all rolled up, I'm going to chill this in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Then, once the roll is ready to be sliced, I'm just going to sprinkle on top some sifted powdered sugar, and this is by the Swerve brand, which is a no sugar substitute, and I'm going to be packing in some of the chopped pecans inside of the roll. This turned out super delicious. I love the fluffiness of the filling and the pumpkin nutty flavor of the cake. It combined perfectly together, and it wasn't too sweet, but it was just a delicious fall treat that we enjoyed. So that is going to be it for this fall cook and bake with me. This was such a lovely, memorable night, and I'm so glad to be sharing these delicious recipes with you guys. Let me know if you try any of these out, and stay tuned for more recipes in the future. I love baking in the holiday season and just coming up with new things to create in the kitchen. So I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon in the next video.